Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, tasting a famous rock oolong. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to Iron Monk, aka Tie Lo Han. We're going to scope this tea and we're going to taste it. This video is going to go under the single tea tastings playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are going to come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then go click that button. It's a Saturday in London. What better way to spend the day than pulling leaves and having a session with you? It's been a long time since we've done a single tea tasting session. So I thought, let's get into it this Saturday. This tea is Tie Lo Han, AKA Iron Monk. For those of you who um, have subscribed to our newsletter, I wrote at the end of last year that this was a contender for my tea of 2016, my tea of the year. Didn't quite make, make it, uh, Jin Jun Mei was the winner, but this was a contender and it's surprising considering it's a fresh in tea. For those of you who haven't subscribed to my newsletter yet, I'll put a link in the description below. So we got this tea in about a month ago, but I intentionally haven't tasted it for about three weeks so that I can come at this session completely fresh. This is Tie Lo Han also known as Iron Monk, also known as Iron Warrior Monk, also known as Iron Ahat. The legend behind this is that a warrior monk with very bronze skin discovered this tea in a cave called Ghost Cave. And because it was discovered by this monk with very tan skin, it was called Iron Warrior Monk or Iron Monk. The Tie in Tie Lo Han is the same Tie as in Tie Guan Yin, which stands for Iron Goddess, for those of you who are interested. So let's scope this tea. This is a spring 2016 tea. I'm speaking to you from January 2017. So this is just under a year old. So spring 2016. And it's important with these Wu Yi Yen Chas, these rock oolongs, that uh, you don't um, buy them totally fresh or you don't uh, taste them totally fresh because they are charcoal roasted and you want time for that charcoal taste, that fire to just calm down a bit. Otherwise that overpowers the tea. So this is the right time for this kind of tea. The cultivar. This cultivar is the Tie Lo Han cultivar. Wu Yi uh, in Fujian province has lots and lots of cultivars, but there are four which are considered the four big reputation cultivars. They're called the Si Da Min Songs. So this is one of them. The other one is uh, Bai Ji Guan, which you may have seen an unboxing um, video that I did of um, a few months ago. The other one is Shui Jin Gui, also known as Golden Turtle, which is a really lovely Wu Yi Oolong. And finally, the very famous but much faked Da Hong Pao, of which I will be doing a video next week, so stay tuned for that. The origin for this tea is Zheng Yan in Wu Yi in Fujian in China. Zheng Yan is the famous kind of um, protected area for these rock oolongs with its 99 cliffs and produces very, very good tea. It's the perfect terroir for these type of yen chas um, because of the soil which comes from volcanic erosion. So it's very, very mineral rich soil. The picking and processing of this tea is up to the third or fourth leaf. They're picked, they're withered, they're allowed to sit, they're shaken, they're allowed to oxidize. And then when the tea master feels it's right, they will heat the leaf up and then they will dry the leaf. And then it goes forward to charcoal roasting that can be from light roasting to medium to dark. So this is quite medium to dark roasted tea. Um, so it's roasted over charcoal in the traditional way. Uh, very time intensive process and very important that you wait to allow that charcoal flavor to start to dissipate and calm down. Finally, E stands for elevation. This is um, about 500, 550 meters, so not super high altitude. The Wu Yi Yen Chars are not super high altitude teas, um, so 500, 530, something like that. Okay, so we've scoped the tea, now we're gonna get into tasting the tea. Right, I have about seven and a half grams of leaf here, and I've got my Yixing uh, pot here. I wanted to brew uh, in Yixing. I have not tried this tea in Yixing yet. Um, when I select my teas, it's always in porcelain so that I get a very transparent flavor. And I've tasted it when it came in to check that it was the same and it's all good. So now I'm gonna taste it with the Yixing pot. I want to make sure that my water is hot, 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 as close to boiling point as possible. So 
100 degrees, 98 degrees, or about 210 Fahrenheit, really, really as hot as possible. These yen chars need high heat um, to really get the flavor out of them. So, um, for those of you who don't know what yen cha is, yen just means rock, cha means, cha means tea, so these are rock teas. And the reason why they're called rock teas is because they're grown in these very rocky environments where the soil is uh, eroded rocks and volcanic rocks, so really, really mineral rich, and that produces a very specific flavor and experience. So, my water's up to temperature, 99 degrees. First things first, very important, warm up your yixing pot because it has a very, um, very good heat retention. It doesn't dissipate uh, heat very quickly, but then it needs heat to warm up. So you need to warm the, the teaware up, especially with yixing pots. So I'm just gonna let that now just soak up the heat because I don't want my first pour in here to take all of the heat away from the leaves. You can see, the color of the leaves here, I've got a camera here which hopefully is gonna pick up the color of the leaves, but just in case, I'll bring it closer to you here. So, larger leaves, a kind of very dark raisin brown color. I think that they are very, very pretty leaves. Um, nice color, that rich, rich color um, that you want for these kinds of teas. Okay, so let's pour this off, make sure that we want to smell the leaves in a hot pot because then the heat just brings out all of those aromatics. This is about 180 ml pot. This comes with our Gong Fu Guru. Um, so it's for a good session. I don't have all the tools here as usual. I'm just putting leaves in the Gong Fu Guru. Okay, so let's get our nose into these leaves. Wow. This tea has, this tea, the dry leaf smells of dark chocolate. It smells of, it has a fruitiness to it, but like um, a cherry fruitiness, not a very zesty fruitiness. Yeah, dark chocolate, cherries, but maybe also a bit of um, alcohol, like a brandy, brandy kind of smell or brandy soaked cherries. So cherries that have been macerated in uh, brandy, dark chocolate, but there's something else there. There's another layer, this kind of, this, there's a kind of funk to this tea, which I can't explain really, a kind of savoriness to this tea, which it makes it really, really alluring and really interesting. When I selected this tea, I selected it from about, I would say about 20 or 30 different yen chas, and this tea really stood out for this kind of funky kind of, savoriness to it, which was really, really enticing. Mm, okay, so the water is still hot, but I'm going to, for the next round, heat the water up again. So I'm just doing the rinse now. I'm not gonna fill this up all the way. I'm just gonna do the rinse. Let's pour this out. Let's warm up some of this teaware. Make sure I'm in focus. I know I'm obsessed with whether or not I'm in focus, but I'm by myself. And so there's no way of me checking or somebody else checking. Um, so it has to be me. So forgive me for always pushing my phone. So we're warming up the teaware. Um, and I'll give you a look of the um, liquor in a bit, but let's smell the wet leaf. So just let that dissipate. Let me smell the lid. Ooh, okay, so now I'm getting more of the charcoal, but it's really, uh, it's nice, it's balanced, it's not too heavy, but now the chocolate, um, the chocolate smells a little bit like it's been baked, so it's a, a bit of a kind of burnt chocolate. The cherryness is still there. In fact, the cherryness is brighter. It's, oh, okay, so it's brighter, and it's also got a real mintiness, like a menthol, yeah, m menthol, Menthol, um, so imagine having um, burnt chocolate or baked chocolate with um, dark cherries, a kind of um, menthol and woody, like antique wood, like um, 
yeah, I don't know wood types, but an antique wood. So if you go into a bookshop or you go into an old um, bar or something and you've got that real antique wood mixed with a distinct mintiness, a distinct, not mintiness, menthol is the right word. So, wow, very excited. Let me heat this water up again because we're currently at 95 degrees and I want to make sure it's super, super hot. I'm going to pour these away. In preparation for the first brew. Now I'm going to brew this a little bit uh, harder. We're in a yeasting pot, which means that it's got the minerality that that means I can brew it stronger without hopefully it getting too um, bitter or astringent. I'm going to start with about a 20 second brew. This uh, yeasting pot pours at about uh, 10 seconds, so I'm going to pour off in about 10 seconds time. Um, boiling, boiling water. This is 100 degrees. I'm going to again pour over, make sure that I keep the heat in here. Let's get the strainer on this. For those of you who count along, I can't, I don't have the luxury of a stopwatch here. I know that that was about 10, 12 seconds. So I'm going to pour off. As I said, this is about a 10 second pour. You can time along with me if you want to geek out, but it's about a 10 to 12 second pour. So it should be around 20 seconds. Okay, lid off. Let's take a look at the color. I have a glass gong dao bay here so that you can see the color. Here we go. Wish you were joining me. This is, um, so the color of it I would say is a dark sherry brown. I don't know if you'd agree with me. I have the light shining through it, so I think it's a little bit lighter for me than it may be for you, but it looks like a kind of dark, quite oxidized sherry brown color. Okay, so let's taste this tea. Here we go. Cheers. One more time. Okay, let's talk texture first. The texture is not super thick. I would class it as a medium textured tea. It's got a kind of crunchiness to it. And what I mean by that is the minerality. The, the minerals are really strong, so it's got a medium start in terms of the body, but then that, that drying minerality kind of has a crunchy, I hope you understand what I mean, but it's that kind of slightly chalky sensation in the mouth, that drying sensation. Mm. This tea is so rounded and, and it's so rich and so full. So the, the texture of it is medium, but drying. But the great thing about drying teas is that your, your mouth starts to produce more saliva, your tongue starts to produce saliva, and that uh, sensation of the saliva being produced makes it a very juicy kind of mouthfeel. So it's dry to juicy. The taste is less chocolatey and more heading towards caramels or butterscotch. But then you've got so much more um, beyond that, you've got the charcoal, which is nice. It's just the right level now. It's not too heavy. It's got that nice warming charcoal fire to it. Butterscotch, as I said. Then you've got the fruit. It is still there, but you know, quite light and cherries. And then you've got that savoriness. And the savoriness, I would say, is kind of quite herbaceous, similar to um, sage. You know how the sage herb just adds savoriness to any cooking. If you're making vegetarian food and you, you use sage, it just adds that savory taste to it. And this tea is really, really rich in that rock rhyme. Um, so for those of you who don't know, yen chas 
are valued for their rock rhyme or their yin yun. And this is more of an experience than a taste. It's a combination of things. So it's a combination of this drying sensation, this strong minerality, this, this slightly chalky, crunchy sensation moving to juicy. But it's also about how the flavor builds. And I've only had, you know, half a pitcher of this tea, but it has layers and it builds. So you're not getting a, a, um, a quick on, quick off taste, which happens with a lot of Da Hong Pao's, I have to say, where you get that initial, oh, lots of charcoal, lots of taste, and then future infusions are finished. This is the slow builder. The layers build up over time um, and the, the fragrance and the aromas just keep coming at you in layers. So I'm getting cherry, I'm getting butterscotch, I'm getting that antique wood that we were talking about before. I'm getting um, that savouriness, almost a slight, uh, it's going to sound bad, I usually do this, but kind of a slight meatiness to it, um, which is part of that rock rhyme flavour. So that minerality, the, the, um, the uh, building up of flavours, that savouriness, that meatiness, all of this is kind of the whole yin yun or rock rhyme experience. I know that this will start to turn into sweetness. It's not going to have the same kind of sweetness as the Hui Guns of Pua teas, which come quite quickly because this is a, a different tea. It's a roasted tea. It's going to take time for those min for that minerality to build up over my mouth and down my throat for that sweetness to come. But I'm pretty sure it will. Anyway, I'm going to stop speaking now. I'm going to reinfuse this a few times and I will come back to let you know my final thoughts on this tea. Okay, guys, I'm just pouring off the sixth infusion here and you can take a look at the liquor. I've been sitting here for about half an hour, really enjoying this tea. This tea has so many uh, layers of flavor. Um, it's, it's quite remarkable. And the way that it builds those flavors or the way that it reveals those flavors um, is really, really alluring and part of the whole rock oolong experience. So you can see that the liquor is still pretty much as dark as the first infusion, but the flavor has definitely changed. So the um, butterscotch flavors have started to die down a little bit. The charcoal is even lighter. So that fiery kind of heat and warmth is started to die down. And it's been replaced with this real tingling minerality, um, a, a slight kind of uh, woodiness, but that uh, antique wood that we were talking about before, and a distinct cherry flavor. But the cherry flavor is kind of like um, a maraschino cherry or, or one of those kind of flavored cherry sweets. So slightly almondy, um, not the sweetness of a maraschino cherry, obviously, but that kind of slightly almondy candied cherry flavor. It's um, such a fascinating tea. One thing I would advise everyone to do, make sure that you brew this really, really hot. I'll show you the leaves. Um, this probably has a, a good two, two or three more infusions in it, um, but this, was, this is after the sixth infusion. And you can see, I won't get them all out, but you can see here that the leaves are um, a really quite textured, quite thick leaf, kind of, um, in China they call it kind of toad skin textured, which again doesn't sound very nice, but hopefully you can see that they are very, very thick, oily, um, and because of, their th because of their thickness, they need hot water. At one point, I think it was the fourth infusion, I had allowed the kettle to cool down to about 95 degrees, which is about uh, 205 Fahrenheit, and it made a real difference. It was too light, the tea. So really, you need to make sure you hit this with hot, hot, hot water, and make sure that the teaware is warmed up as well, so that when you're pouring the water, uh, the heat isn't just disappearing into the teaware. The smell of the empty Gong Dao Bay, oh, again, cherry, cherry and butterscotch. <laughs> such, a, such a great combination, cherry and butterscotch um, on the empty cup. Um, in terms of the sensation, you know, I think that this is quite a warming tea. Um, it's got a bit of energy, but because it's a roasted oolong, it's not going to have a big rushy kind of caffeine feel, but it's got something quite high about it. Um, I wouldn't say it's a tea to get you totally tea drunk, but it's got a nice energetic um, 
uh, warmth to it. It's got a, a kind of fuzzy kind of warm feeling. Um, and yeah, that, that slightly, slightly elevated um, feeling, slightly elevated um, body and mind feeling. Um, it's a great, great tea. I think that this would pair really, really well with all kinds of foods. The savoriness of this tea um, means that it would pair very well with uh, savory dishes. Meat dishes, I think, would work very well with this tea because of that kind of slightly sage savoriness to the tea. Um, but it would also work very well with desserts, I think, because of the roasted nature of it. It would probably work with baked um, desserts, cakes, biscuits, things like that. But just sitting here, tasting it by itself, it really is a wonderful experience and I highly, highly recommend that you get hold of some of this tea. This is Tielohan, aka Iron Monk, a perfect example of a Wu Yi Yen Cha for those who want to explore that type of tea from that part of the world. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. Check out our YouTube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you would like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don May from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from the tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.